Louisiana is the number one state with exports to Cuba. And Cuba had a role in events leading to the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. And one Louisiana son, Richard Lipsy, played an important role in the aftermath of JFK's death. After growing up in Baton Rouge and graduating from LSU, Lipsy enlisted in the Army in 1962. While stationed at Fort Pope for two years, he accepted a job as an aide for General Philip Wheel. That job eventually landed him in Washington, D.C., and the Oval Office with President Kennedy, giving him an unintended front row seat to one of America's most infamous historical moments. Several thousand enthusiastic Texans are on hand to give the President and Mrs. Kennedy a warm welcome. We had a typical day, picked up General Wheel in the morning at 6.30, and I'm standing outside the car just waiting because the general was always prompt. This car is now turning on to Elm Street. I can remember we were listening to the radio, and it comes over the radio. The president has been shot. There has been a shooting. Parkland Hospital has been advised to stand by for a severe gunshot wound. We jump in the car, and there were two telephones in the car. Black phone, which is a regular telephone, and a red phone, which you picked it up, went directly to the White House. And the red phone rings. The general picked it up. It was Mrs. Lincoln uh, in hysterics, telling General Wheel, please come to the White House immediately. Well, we were already on the way. Traffic was stopped. People were standing outside of their cars. The radios were on. Some people were crying, just standing there in disbelief. And we hear the president is dead. It's official. As of just a few moments ago, the president of the United States is dead. Of course, we're in shock, too. We get to the White House, and of course, everybody is crying. They're in hysterics and holding on to each other, comforting each other. We go into General Wheel's office, and he opens a drawer and he takes out two pistol belts and he puts one pistol belt on and another one is an old army 45 fully loaded and he hands that to me he says you put this on he says when we get the body off the airplane he says you're going to stay with it and nobody comes near it it was a Jackie's choice to go to Bethesda Naval Hospital for the autopsy because the president had been in the Navy. It was myself and a couple of technicians in the room. I had never seen a dead man before, much less here I am picking up the body of the president of the United States and laying him on the table and helping get dried blood off of him. and. Then that's when the doctors came in and started the autopsy, which is a pretty gruesome thing in itself to watch an autopsy. Down this avenue of sadness, they bring President John F. Kennedy, martyred hero, to lie in state under the great dome of the Capitol. The next day when we marched, we had the same horse and carriage, the same caisson that was used for Abraham Lincoln's funeral a hundred years before. It was surreal. President Kennedy's accused assassin is shot down himself during a jail transfer. He's a 24-year-old pro-Castro Texan who once sought Soviet citizenship. The Louisiana connections to the assassination have provided endless fodder for conspiracy theorists. New Orleans native Lee Harvey Oswald passed out pro-Castro leaflets just days before the assassination leading some to believe Cuba was behind it. Another theory is that Carlos Marcello and the Mafia are behind it. However, Louisiana Congressman Hale Boggs served on the Warren Commission, which ultimately concluded that Oswald was a lone gunman. I can tell you firsthand, I, I didn't watch it from afar. I'm six feet from it when the doctors are doing the autopsy. The president was shot. 
by Lee Harvey Oswald from a distance of approximately 50, 60 yards from that six-story window in the Texas School Book Depository. It's no question the Warren Report is very accurate. 